well, for this example, we have the problem statement. The wires each have diameter of half inch, length of two feet, and are made of 304 stainless steel. Determine the magnitude of force P so that the rigid beam tilts 0 0.015 degrees. So right here in this case, we're supposed to solve for the force P such that it tilts, this beam tilts 0 0.015 degrees. So always when you're giving um, problem statements, it's always a good idea to write down where are the givens. In this case, we have the dimensions, we have that external load, as well as the lengths of each of the wires. Um, for the th 306 stainless steel, we have the modulus of elasticity being 28 million pounds per square inch PSI, so we have that given. Now, first things first, we could go ahead and solve for the tensions in each of these cables um, with respect to this variable P, because keep in mind, we're trying to solve for this variable, and there's many relationships that we're going to be using to be able to be able to solve for that external load P. So first off, you could draw the free body diagram to and to do the static equilibrium to find the tensions in each of the cable. So drawing the free body diagram, we have the tension in cable AD, the external load P, and the tension in cable BC. So to solve for each of these, we could go ahead and just do the summation moments with respect to point A and solve for the tension in BC. And then afterwards, we could go ahead and do the sum of forces for along the vertical direction to solve for the other tension. So let me go ahead and do that. So we see the tension in cable BC is equal to two thirds of that external load P. Now just by intuition alone, we could already tell that the tension in the other cable is only going to be one third of that because the total tension in those two cables is equivalent to that external load. So the tension in AD is equal to one third of that external load. So now we have both of these tensions. Now you could go ahead and do the sum of forces along the y direction and just solve for it. That's perfectly fine as well. So now we have the first relationship, which is the tensions dependent on that external load. Now, the second thing this problem statement asked was for the beam to have a tilt of 0 0.015 degrees. So at the end of the day, once this external load is applied, it's actually going to be tilting a bit. And let me go ahead and draw this out to make it more clear. So just drawing the beam as a stick figure here with that angle, which is 0 0.015 degree tilt, we have the length of this beam being three feet. And we could actually go ahead and solve for this height here. Let's call it D. So we could just do the, we could use the tangent here. So tangent of that angle theta is equal to um, opposite or D over adjacent, which is L. Now in this case, when it comes to um, angle so small in this case, we could actually just state that this um, length here, the dashed line is equivalent to three feet because it's going the change in that difference is going to be negligible. So we could actually leave it at three feet here and we could actually solve for that D. So D is equal to L times tangent theta, and we know tangent theta is 0 0.015 degrees. So just plugging in for that and solving for D gives us. So D gives us 0 0.0007854 feet. And this is another bit of information that we're going to be using to solve this problem. Now let's go ahead and draw the diagram. Once it is tilted, we have to keep in mind both of these cables will deform a bit. So not only do we have to consider the beam tilting, we also have to consider each of the wires deforming a bit here and here. So let's go ahead and do it on another page. So it's always recommended to always draw as many diagrams as possible to help clarify what is being asked of as well as when it comes to what is needed to solve. Now here, we have the original position of the beam which was straight, let's say from here to here, right? But then once we have that load being applied P, we actually tilt this beam by that angle point 0 0.015 
degrees. Now, causing this tilt, not only does the cable BC deform delta BC, but the cable AD also deforms as well here. So it's not as simple as just calculating the deformation of one of the cables and assuming the other cable remains the same. No, both of these cables actually deforms, which why it makes this problem a little bit more complicated, more steps involved, that's for sure. But from here, we can actually um, get another relationship from this. So just looking at this, the, the deformation of cable BC here, the delta BC, is equivalent to this D, this D portion, right? That height that we calculate for that tilt needed. D plus this deformation of cable AD. So cable BC deform, the def total deformation of that is D plus the deformation of cable AD. So here's another relationship, which is what we're going to be using for to actually solve for it. Now, knowing that the the equations for the deformation is equal to the external load PL divided by E A. We go ahead and replace the deltas with this equation. And let's go ahead and do that. So then this is what we have. We have the tension cable BC, the length of BC divided by E A. In this case, they're both the same for both of the cables, so I didn't put any subscript here. However, for the tension in AD here, we have this plus this. Okay, so this is another relationship. But remember initially when we did that static equilibrium, we have the relationship of the tensions in the cables with respect to that external load P. So this is where we replace the tensions in BC and the tension in AD with the two-thirds P and the one-third P that we originally calculate so let's go ahead and do that so this is what we have two-thirds P because remember we have that relationship between the tension in BC and the external load which was two-thirds P times the length divided by EA is equal to D plus in this case we had one-third PL divided by EA we get P's to one side of the equation and factor out and basically have this formula um, to solve for that P which we get so now after moving things around factoring the p moving everything to one side of the equation we get p is equal to three times d times e a divided by the length of the cables and we after plugging in all of the values we previously saw for the the d in this case we go ahead and we finally get that external load that would cause such a tail point 0, 0.015 degrees is equal to 6,470 pounds of force. This is the amount of force it would take to cause this kind of tilt in this beam. So this is a little bit more involved problem. However, it did show you the concepts of um, using that deformation equation um, that was derived using Hooke's law as well as coming up with more relationships needed to be able to solve for such problems. So this is where you always should take it one step at a time and see what is needed and what other relationships you could get, which is why it's very important to draw those diagrams. And so this is how you solve these kind of problems utilizing that Hooke's law relationship to come up with the deformations and any unknowns that we may be asked for in certain systems.